Now we look at the performance of windowed protocols on an end-to-end -end manner because TCP is after all an end-to-end -end windowing protocol and it remains transparent to the intermediate routers. Although TCP is the de facto standard of windowing protocols these days, but at the same time, it is also affected by its limitations. In this module, we shall see what are the limitations of TCP, which make it inappropriate for voice and video transmission. And we'd relate the performance of TCP with regards to the bandwidth, that is the throughput, and the delay. The classical book by Gallagher and Bertsikus, titled Data Networks, is highly recommended for students who are interested in pursuing network modeling, which helps them to understand more quantitatively the underlying processes and operations going on the internet. In end-to-end -end window protocols, the inherent limitation is that since the windows are meant for error control and flow control, so less emphasis has been initially given to the design to provide any guarantees with regards to minimum rate and the expected time of file transfer. That is why we do not see end-to-end -end protocols being widely used for voice and video applications. The another limitation that often affects the design and highlights the limitations is that the window size trade-off has to be precisely reached at. What we mean from here is that from a network perspective, lesser number of packets is demanded because with more number of packets in the subnet, congestion is highly likely to develop. From an individual flow point of view, the maximum throughput is highly desired because the user is interested in achieving maximum network utilization. Apparently, it is a catch-22 situation in which both of these requirements are contradictory. Hence, the trade-off becomes important. The visualization here tries to establish a relationship between the bandwidth or throughput or the transmission rate and the round-trip time. If the round-trip time is bounded, say it is limited, we expect the transmission rate to be higher. We can keep it larger because the packets would take less time to get delivered and the issue of lots of packets stuck in a very long queue of routers does not arise. But as the round trip time increases, more packets would transit in the network. When more packets are there, the likelihood of congestion building up increases. And that is why, intuitively, we expect that there would be a decay or some kind of reduction in the overall throughput. Mathematically, if we could establish a relationship, we'll say that as long as the round trip time is bounded, we'll expect the performance to reach its peak, that is 1 upon x, where x being the transmission of a single segment. But as the round trip time increases, the slope at which the overall throughput reduces is governed by the factor w divided by d. That is, more is the round trip time, the overall reduction is profound. Similarly, if the round trip time is large, but the window size is also large, we expect 
the slope to gradually decay. This trade-off to identify what window size should we choose and for what RTT that window size is appropriate is most often resorted with on empirical findings. Overall mathematical relationship, if it were to be designed, is expected to become very complex. That is why we have some empirically established values.